During Hawaii's plantation era, plantation owners, ranchers, and other agricultural entrepreneurs brought about many changes to our islands. They introduced new crops, built irrigation systems, and were the base of Hawaii's economy before tourism. David Thomas Fleming was an early pioneer of watershed conservation as he recognized the connection between agriculture and Maui's forests. My grandfather was loved and respected by all who knew him and who worked for him. He was a generous man, religious and disciplined. He had great foresight and vision a hundred years ahead of his time. In 1912, D.T. Fleming became the manager of Honolulu Ranch in West Maui. He helped their ranch employees start a hukila fishing business. Fleming experimented with many food crops in West Maui such as papaya, lychee, and watermelon. My grandfather imported trees from around the world to make Maui a better place to live. He would give trees to all the people in Kapalua and in Lahaina just so that they would have their own fruit trees sustain themselves and be able to pick their own fruit in their backyard. He also began large-scale pineapple production on the ranch and a canning operation called Baldwin Packers that eventually became Maui Land and Pine. Fleming was also a hydrologist who worked on Hamakua Ditch and the tunnels and flumes providing water to Kapalua. In his retirement, Fleming obtained land in Pu'umahoi at Ulupalakua where he saw the opportunity to create another kind of lasting impact on Maui's environment, one that would outlive him. He was a hydrologist and he knew the value of the watershed and trees to attract the rain. And when he saw the demise of the dryland forest, he took action to restore the watershed. And so he preserved the dryland forest species to be a strong seed resource for restoration. Today, the Seven Acre Fleming Arboretum is home to over 100 of the rarest dryland forest species on the island. D.T. Fleming's granddaughter, Martha, works with community groups to carry out projects that will continue his legacy. Uh, my grandfather chose Pu'umohoi cinder cone to plant his dream for retirement, which is a native plant and arboretum to preserve the rare trees from the Oahe forest. <laughs> The Arboretum is kind of a trip into the past of Hawaii's forests. It's uh, an incredible collection of, of dry land and uh, middle elevation trees, shrubs, herbs, vines that grow or used to grow in the dry forests on the leeward side of East Maui. The Arboretum at Pu'umahoe is really important for conservation in, in the state of Hawaii. It offers a site that's um, in the dry or mazic forest, meaning the medium wet forest. Uh, it sort of carries on what the grandfather started. She works with the Plant Extinction Prevention Program, and there are many plants here that there are very few individuals left in the wild. So it's a, it's a very important site for uh, being able to produce plant material, to go to other sites, and to bolster other conservation programs. Especially exciting is the involvement with the community in our work. This is an arboretum for the community. And our adopt a forest program is something we just started a year ago. A community group will get a plot of land, and usually with a theme, whether it be Maui Forest or um, Snail Preserve, or this coming weekend we're going to do hardwood forest, um, woods valued by the Hawaiians for their hardwood and they, the groups come back every year. So eventually the non-native grasses which are holding the erosion are replaced with native plants. So it's something that they can come back when they're 40 years old, they can bring their kids and see their trees in 40 years. I'm here at Pu'umahoe and um, we're here doing a tree planting um, of native um, Hawaiian species. And this plant right here, it's called Kowila. And as I understand, the Kawila wood is one of probably the hardest woods in the native um, Hawaiian uh, plants. And it was, I guess, considered like the steel back in the day for the Hawaiian people. They didn't have metal. So not only is it beautiful, but then it has the history. And I'm happy to be here to have um, put one to life and one day have it be towering, tall and healthy and um, for our future generations like yourselves to learn about. 
With the help of community groups, Martha is carrying on the work her grandfather started to preserve Maui's dryland forest species. We have made steady progress and will continue to do so. I know my grandfather would be pleased.